What's up guys? Today we're going to be talking about phones. And I finally had a major jump in phones. And I upgraded from the iPhone SE to the iPhone 14 Pro. That's a pretty major leap, but I've had the SE since I was a freshman in college and it's been about four or five years. I was all the way back in 2018. It served its purpose. I've never really had the reason to upgrade phones. Uh, the SE always did pretty good. A couple months ago, part of the screen just totally stopped working. And so that really set back. I couldn't post anymore. I couldn't even like text people on certain apps. I couldn't DM people on Instagram. If I wanted to send a text message, I would have had to uh, literally flip the phone over. And hopefully if that app could have the landscape mode, then I could send a message because that part of the screen worked. And so I dealt with that for a couple months and I finally hit a breaking point. I was like, I need to upgrade. The iPhone 14 just came out and so I started looking and I found a pretty good deal on a website called Gazelle. They sell, they sell used phones and I found an iPhone 14 Pro with 256 gigabytes for under a thousand dollars, which is amazing. You never find that. And so it is refurbished, but it's basically brand new. This video is not sponsored by Gazelle, but if you're looking for a good place to find some cheaper, really good quality phones that are refurbished, Gazelle is a really good place to look. Now to get into the reasons why I chose the iPhone 14 Pro over you know, other models or the, even the iPhone 13 that I could get for a lot cheaper it comes down to the characteristics of the phone and what the phone offers. When my SE's screen finally quit on me, any phone would have been a direct step up, but going straight to the iPhone 14 Pro was a major leaps and bounds over the SE and camera, functionality, battery life, all of that. My phone was finally hitting sort of like the lifespan. The battery wasn't lasting all day. The camera quality was absolute garbage. And I don't know if that's from the updates or all the storage had already run out and all that stuff. So upgrading to the newest phone allowed me to have leaps and bounds over my past phones. I want to deep dive into the three areas that I held into consideration when I wanted to upgrade my phone, which was the camera, the battery life, and processing and overall functionality of the phone. The iPhone SE that I had previously, which pretty much is dead at this point, did not have a really good camera whatsoever. So I wanted to upgrade to the iPhone 14 Pro especially because the camera has a 48 megapixel camera, which if you know anything about cameras is better than a lot of DSLR cameras that you can get on the market. The one I'm currently shooting with, the R6 has I think 30 something, 20 something, um, and the R5 has like a 45 megapixel camera. So if that shows you anything, the iPhone 14 Pro is doing pretty well on the camera side. The videos look flawless, the camera looks amazing, especially when you're posting to Instagram and taking pictures straight out of phones. You can't hardly tell the difference. Now over time, the image quality will fade away, but always the camera will be better than the iPhone. Just looking at the difference in a split second, you won't be able to tell the difference whatsoever. So upgrading to the iPhone 14 Pro was basically like a no brainer in terms of a photographer and videographer standpoint. The battery life is supposed to last, I think 23 hours with the iPhone 14 Pro. I've used it for the past week and I have not had to charge it a single time throughout the day. It's lasted me the entire day, which I have never had a phone that has lasted me the entire day ever in my entire life. So that is a big step up in my opinion. Functionality. The iPhone 14 Pro has the A16 chip in it, I think, and that is the brand new model of you know iPhone chips that they're putting in there, and the processing is just out of this world. So it is just a major step up in phone quality all around, which isn't a big surprise because the iPhone SE is like the cheapest one you can buy and they made it as like a cheap version of the iPhone 11 I think into like a 6s body or something like that. 
Another reason why I got the iPhone 14 Pro or the newest model is because I thought in the long run, getting the newest one will also allow me to keep that one for a lot longer before an even better one comes out, which is hands and shoulders above that one. And so I can have the iPhone 14 Pro for the next, you know, couple years until, you know, the 17 comes out or 18 where it is just heads and shoulders above the iPhone 14 Pro. So I'm hoping that in the long run, it'll help me out to not have to upgrade next year. There are also some little minor characteristics that I like. I like not having the home button anymore. I know that was kind of out a while ago, but I've had that for the past couple years with the iPhone SE and also the iPhone 14 Pro has the entire screen and it just has that little island in the top of the phone which, or top of the screen, which is pretty cool in my opinion. It offers more screen real estate, and if you're watching videos or using your phone to play a game, it'll cover the entire screen instead of having just a little box, and so it gives you more screen real estate. There aren't really a lot of downsides for me upgrading. If you had the iPhone 13, I've heard a lot of people say that it's not really that big of a jump. I know they added a cinematography mode to the camera and they even have like 0.5 zoom and up to three times zoom, which is really cool. That's the first time I've ever had that. I'm not sure if it was on the 13. I never had the 13, but that is a really cool aspect to this phone and I'm loving using it. I've only had it for the past week, so I haven't had that much of time to test it out and take videos of it or even just compare and see what's the best settings and all that stuff. But I know in my personal opinion, stepping up from the SE to the iPhone 14 Pro was a major leap and it was totally worth it, totally worth the money. Finally getting my hands on a newer phone showed me that in the first day that it was, there's no question that it was a good choice. The last thing I wanna talk about is the case. The case I use for my iPhone 14 Pro is from Urban Armor Gear. I use the civilian, fill focus, the civilian model. It was one of the more sleek and just overall aesthetic looking ones. It didn't look too boxy and still offers really great protection. Um, it was a little bit more pricey. I think it was around 60 bucks with the screen protector, but it offers great protection and it fits well in the pocket. It's never snagged, doesn't get caught on anything and still offers a lot of protection for the phone. Overall, the 14 Pro is a massive leap from the iPhone SE, so I'm really happy in my upgrade. If you're looking to upgrade to a new phone or a newer phone, I strongly suggest you looking for deals online, Amazon, Gazelle. There's a couple of them out there that offer really good refurbished or new phones. I would strongly recommend you look at any reviews for any of the sites that you go to and wish to purchase your new phone from just to make sure that they're accredited and that they'll give good products to you and that you don't receive anything that you'll have to send back or create a bigger hassle than it already is. That's all that I got for today. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to join along in my journey in YouTube and creating more videos here in the future. I'm looking to put out more videos on photography, videography, and travel related content. So if you think you're interested, subscribe, join along in my journey, and I hope you have a good day and peace out.